Running a body corporate is one of the most difficult things in the world to do. If you can run a body corporate, you can do anything. The leadership skills that are required are out of this world. You've got people complaining. You've got residents angry, frustrated, complaints, municipalities. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And here to tell us about that light is Omar Kinnear. Omar, thank you so much for joining me on scottkundal.com. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me. Good. So let's begin. What are the worst frustrations that body corporates currently have to deal with? Yes, Scott, as you mentioned, it's, uh, you know, the body corporates have to deal with so many different issues, so many different aspects, and they deal with so many different kinds of people. And a part of that is managing, you know, residents, managing owners, managing the expectations between, you know, the different parties, you know, dealing with service providers and all these different people, you know, managing different timelines and, and different ways of communicating between these people. Um, so, yeah, so we try to come up with a way to make it a lot easier for, for residents and, and managing agents to be able to communicate and share, you know, share information, uh, essentially. Uh, so, you know, the, one of the biggest frustrations that we find is not knowing and that communication part of it. So, you know, if you don't know when uh, a meeting is happening or you don't know when uh, you know, the, the gate is going to be up, for example, uh, you know, that causes a, a frustration when you get back and you can't get into your complex or, you know, you get back and you can't, you know, do whatever you need to do for whatever reason. Uh, so we just, yeah, we find that communication is a big key in running your, your body corporate. And if you can maintain that and, and centralize that communication, it's a big, big aspect. Absolutely. And having lived in those estates, I know exactly what it's like. What made you decide to start Resident Portal and create a solution for this problem? You've obviously felt it firsthand. Yeah, so it, it's really a personal, uh, you know, quite a personal story. So uh, I'm part of uh, a, the, the Homeowners Association at a, at a state in Joburg as well. And I'm also part of a, a, the chairman at a, a, a sectional title complex. And, you know, the, it originally started with, you know, at, the, at our complex or the, the secretary, the, there's, a, there's a clubhouse facility. And we, you know, we wanted to book the facility for a birthday party that we were having. And the process to do that was, you know, it was quite cumbersome and quite frustrating for me. So, it, you know, we had to phone someone who only had availability between a certain time. And, you know, then if they don't have the calendar in front of them that particular time, you have to phone back the next day. And then they see if it's available and they schedule you. And then you say, okay, fine, you've booked the clubhouse for this. And, you know, coming from a software background, uh, you know, we tend to come up with solutions. And I thought there's, there's got to be an easier way to, to do this. And, you know, I looked for some solutions out there to see what there was and didn't really find anything that suited uh, the scenario that I was looking for. So I thought, look, look let, me, let me build this for, for our complex. And with that, I thought, okay, if, if we're going to be using it, I can build this for other complexes as well. So I started off building it with uh, a basic you know, sharing of information, being able to book facilities, you know, whether it's a clubhouse or tennis court, or you know, it could even be a boardroom, for example, um, and and growing from there. So you know, centralizing where you come to, you know, to find out information or to engage with your body corporate in in one place. You know, making it available from anywhere in the world, making it available from any device, and yeah, that's sort of the the background. All great things come from personal stories. So you started building Resident Portal and you started working and implementing this for uh, other clusters as well. Tell us about the implementation process because nobody wants to, you know, go through a cumbersome training process and, oh my gosh, I've got to learn new software and there's a problem. Just tell us through the kind of rollout process. What actually happens to get the system in a complex and how much work is it on behalf of the body corporate management? Yeah. Yeah, so as you mentioned, the training side is, you know, nobody likes change. Nobody likes to implement new systems. So we've really tried to make it as easy as possible to, to roll out our system. Uh, we've made it self-managed. So, you know, uh, body corporates or, or managing agents can actually run it by themselves entirely if they wanted to. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. Um, and we can be up and running and have a portal for a, a complex in, a, you know, literally a couple of minutes. And the way we do that is 
we've we've taken a different approach to to setting up the the information. Uh, we allow uh, the, the managing agents to invite their their residents, whether they're tenants or owners, and then we put the power in, into their hands. You know, so they can register, they can sign up, they can keep all the information up to date. Uh, it takes that burden off the the managing agent or the the you know the body corporate, whether whether it's run by the trustees or not, and you know, it just makes it a lot easier for them and it makes it uh, easier for, for residents to have control over the information. So essentially what you're saying is instead of the management company having to continuously update the database all the time, they can simply let the residents do it themselves. Well, to a large extent. Is, is that right? That's correct, especially uh, for their, their own information. So you know, managing their own contact information and then and, uh, you know, moving in, moving out, that sort of thing. So that's all in the, the residents' hands. And you know, then in terms of the, the you know, official communication or documentation or you know, whether it's events, that's all managed through then the, the body corporate. So that, that is all uh, controlled. And also we've built security into that aspect as well where you know, they can control who sees certain information, you know, who, who gets certain notifications, who's got access to, for example, financial documents of the estate versus uh, general notification or news letters that they want to send out on a monthly basis. So we've tried to you know, make, it, make it secure, make it easy to, to use. And then where we can, we've also automated a lot of the, the functionality where if they don't need to uh, manage the information, we try and remove that, that aspect of it. So an example would be if there's a, uh, uh, we, you know, maybe there's a, a, a problem with a gate and they know that the, the gate's going to be fixed this afternoon at two o'clock. They can send a notification out in the morning saying that the, the gate's going to be fixed uh, at two o'clock. And then what they can do is they can just auto expire that notification. So what happens is the notification gets sent out. It's available on, uh, you know, it gets emailed to all the residents. It's available online as well. Uh, but then at two o'clock when the message expires, it just gets removed from the system automatically. So they don't have to come back again and now I delete the message because it's old and it's not relevant anymore. It does that automatically for them. Okay, so a lot of the complexes and estates have got communication tools already. They could be using a bulk SMS tool or maybe email if they're really organized. Some of them even have their own little websites or landing pages. How do you, do you replace those? Do you fit in with it? Do you work with it? I mean, is that, is that, is it different to what you offer? Just tell us how that fits in together. Yeah. So I think one of the, the things that we try to do is we're centralizing the information. So, you know, whether it's a WhatsApp group or email, uh, a lot of the times that information gets lost, especially when you look at things like, uh, you know, requests from residents uh, or, or quotes approvals, payment approvals, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, often we, before we implement the system in, in especially in the complex where I'm the, the chairman, we'll get, uh, you know, requests for uh, this invoice is unpaid. And then we'll see, okay, but we never actually got, it, got that invoice. And you know, then it becomes a, a tracking email uh, nightmare, really, because now we have to go back and look, did we receive this email? Didn't we receive this email? And they say they sent it and we didn't receive it. So now, you know, by implementing a system where you can track all that information, it's all centralized. You know, you get a reference number, you can see the order trail behind that. So it just makes everything, you know, centralized and you know, to come back to your original question, it's, it's we do work with all those other aspects still. So, you know, WhatsApp groups are great because it's real time and, it, and it's quick and easy to manage, but it's not really structured. Uh, so we try to take that information, make it available centrally. And we also then allow you know, people to, to register and they, they need to get approved before they get added to that. But whereas with the WhatsApp group, you can't go and try and register for uh, your, your complexes WhatsApp group. You have to ask someone to add you, that sort of thing. Um, but we try to work with those those other technology aspects, but we are you know a standalone system that can manage all of that as well. Thank you, Omar. So a lot of body corporates are going to want to get in touch with you. They need these solutions in place, some more urgently than others, because we know it's an important thing that they need to get sorted out. How can they get hold of you to talk about these solutions? Yeah, you're welcome to visit our website on www.residentportal.co.za or you can email me directly at omar at residentportal.co.za. Omar Kania, thank you so much for joining me on scottkandil.com. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me.